Hey, what's up guys? My name is Moda and welcome back to the Mining Stacker YouTube channel. Today's video, we're gonna do an overall update on Caspa ASIC mining. So there's been a lot of developments recently, a lot of huge price drops, and we've kind of hit a critical point in the overall hash rate and difficulty. We'll talk about that. And looks like there are potential overclocks coming for a lot of you Ice River guys. So from like KS zeros, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll talk about the developments there and the timeline, right? Which is coming pretty soon, right? So if that sounds good, guys, stay tuned, all right? So let's get to this thing. So let's start off with Casper's price. And this thing has been holding, man. Just recently hit an all-time high not too long ago. And we're chilling, right? It's at 0.0468. And it's just been hovering in that range, which is crazy considering all the potential sell pressure, right? A lot of it coming from, you know, people buying these big boy ASICs, right? And a lot of people's initial concern and people were saying, ah, it's not really going to be an issue because of the daily emissions, right? So even if the daily emissions got sold off every day, not going to affect it that much. While true, my bigger concern was, especially right now, is all the people who got in super early, hodling that entire time, waiting for a good pivotal point to just dump everything so they can pay off their machine and profit still, right? And we just, I was pretty convinced that when we hit that, you know, after five cents that we were gonna retrace pretty hard, but no, right? It's possible that some of these guys did sell, but it just got absorbed. Again, one big thing that's keeping all of this up is just the fact that Caspa has gotten so much adoption, right? We're in the top 50, it's ranked number 44 by market cap. It's it's huge, right? It's it's grown so much, and that's one thing I definitely did not factor in the beginning of all this, right? We all knew we're all into Casper. We knew it was going to do well. I didn't think it was going to get this kind of like mainstream adoption though this early, especially this deep in the in the freaking bear market, right? Which is just it's been insane, man. Like I was convinced that was a hundred percent. We're definitely going lower. You know, it's been crazy, man. One hell of a ride. All right, so let's look at overall profitability. And of course, it is down. Every month we look at it, it's just gonna continue to go down. Not even a month, it's been almost like a weekly thing where it's just, it's, you know, it's a double whammy, right? The, the hash rate and the difficulty just continues to go up, meaning that your yield is going down. And on top of that, we have that monthly emissions reduction, that 6%, so it's just a constant downtrend. Again, you have those two big factors going against you and really affecting your overall yield, right? The fiat value actually has been doing pretty well, and it's because of this price action we've been staying up, right? I was 100% convinced that we we're gonna be in the two, three cent range, and if we were, right, this thing would be making half of what it is now. Instead of it being 258, it'd be about 130 bucks. But again, that price action has been amazing, it's been holding well, and it's been doing its thing, right? I'm saying that, you know, the yield is going down, but it's what was expected. It's not something that was unexpected. We knew that it was going to go up. We knew how dramatically it was going to go up. And it's been doing its thing, right? And so far, because it's... And a lot of people are crying about it. They're complaining about it. Oh, man, my, my KS1, the yield has gone down so much. Bro, it's an ASIC making $27 a day. It's insane, right? Or even like the KS0. Freaking $450 ASIC that's still pulling in as much as the freaking these three $4,000 ASICs. Insane, right? Borderline unreal for a unit that only requires 65 watts, right? It's just, it's insane, All right? And let's look at the overall hash rate. Recently, they just had a lot of nodes go down. They had this recent dust attack, and that's what this huge dip is, right? It's probably going to go up in the next 24 hours or so. If any of you guys have Caspa ASICs, make sure your pool is up. If it is not, switch pools to one that is up. Take advantage of this low difficulty, right? So just something to take note of there. But overall, currently, we're about 25, 26 petahash. And the reason I say it's kind of a critical point, a lot of the pain has already been felt. Right, for those of you guys who have these ASICs, you know you've been seeing it weekly going down, down, down. We're at the point now where it takes a lot of hash rate increase for it to really drop your yield now. Right, for example, for you to go half again 
we'd have to go all the way to 50 petahash, right? Which is possible, yes, but again, it's going to take a lot of hardware, a lot of sales for that to happen, right? And the way a lot of these big units have been selling doesn't seem extremely likely, right? Unless we have extreme price cuts, which we did just get, actually. So we'll talk about that here in a second. But again, keep in mind for it to go half from here again, if we calculate it right based off of the KS3, based off of the nine terahash units, they'd have to sell about 2,800 units. So if they sell 2,800 units, it's going to add another 25 petahash, therefore doubling the overall hash rate, therefore having your current yield, right? So is that possible? Sure, right? Um, is that likely at these prices? In the short term, probably not, right? We know overall that that 2000 number is kind of the numbers we saw with like the, the KA3 release, the K7 release. That was kind of the ballpark. That's what we're kind of thinking. And so it's possible, right? But again, even if they manufacture that many, they have to sell these things, right? And the biggest thing that was hurting Bitmain was the fact that Ice River was controlling the pricing of the market, especially because of the, especially when that KS3L came out, because that made it way more appealing than getting the KS3, right? The price for Terahash was just so much better with the Ice River. A lot of people who were considering going the higher end, they were definitely going with the KS3L, which was available months ago now, right? Versus the Bitmain KS3 is just now beginning to really ship, right? So it's just pretty crazy because, I mean, again, look at it. Like, again, even if that comes to fruition and the hash rate does go up to 50 petahash, freaking KS3 is still going to be making 130 bucks a day, right? A KS1 is still going to be making $13.50 a day. For an ASIC that only requires 600 watts, right? So, but just keep in mind, right? The hash rate is going to go up, that emission schedule, a lot of things to factor in. I know it sounds good. There's still a lot of factors, and these prices can continue to drop even more, though, right? Reason being is that the price is purely based on the profitability of the miner versus the cost to produce the miner. That's why it's possible, especially for these high-end units, to see these extreme price cuts, right? Which, again, which we just saw. Right? And what I'm alluding to is with Bitmain unit. It had been hovering. It started at 50, went down to 40, then it was in the mid-30s. And then now I just did that freaking ASIC pricing update video about them ripping off the Band-Aid. And like two days later, they decided to do just that. Right? For We just saw they ran a two-day promo for the WDMS where they brought it down to under 18K. Right? Which is pretty crazy because, again, going from 36K to 18K... That's huge, 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 huge. And it's painful, especially for any guys who did order a Bitmain unit and still haven't even freaking received it. And this is happening already, right? And that's the main risk you have to consider with these things is that it's based off of the profitability of the unit, not necessarily the cost of the manufacture of the unit, right? This thing probably only cost them maybe a couple thousand bucks to produce, right? There's a lot more to that though. There's a lot of R&D time, the manufacturing, designing of the chips, et cetera, et cetera. But the unit itself, the cost to produce the unit probably isn't that much, right? Especially, I highly doubt it's anywhere in this range, right? So it's something you got to factor in that it's potentially possible, right? Which we, again, we did just see this and we were kind of curious, like, oh, is this just a temporary drop? Is it only X amount of units just to build out hype? Because it was only a two-day sale, right? But no, it turns out that this appears to be a permanent price drop. Right? As we go to some of the stores, they now have them listed in this price range. Right, So like CMC has the 9.4 listed at around 22. We go to Minor Bros. They have a lot of variants. This is something that's kind of interesting. It seems like there's a ton of variants now. It might be something similar to the L7. <laughs> where they have a wide range of units. Uh, so Minor Bros has a 8.3, an 8.8, .8, and a 9.4 listed. The cheapest being the 8.3, shipping in early October, under 20K, right? So 19,500. BT Miners is an interesting one because they have a unit that nobody else has listed. Not just one unit, actually a whole array of them. They have a 7.3, 7.6, 7.9, right? Which is interesting. Um, the 7.3 under being under 20K. I'm assuming that this is supposed to be 8.3, right? Similar to the Miner Bros, but that's just what they have listed. 
Um, so this was not a temporary price drop. This does appear to be a permanent price drop, right? So now the question is, what is Ice River going to do about it? Right. So currently, again, they had been controlling the market, the KS3L and now the KS3M have been the much better bangs for the buck. Right. Because, again, you're comparing a thirty thousand dollar unit when you could have potentially bought this guy, which was only going from eight terahash down to six terahash for half the price. Right. So like the KS3L to me was the game changer when that guy first got announced because that price point, the price to terahash was just so much better than the KS3. Right, and now the KS3L has been replaced by the KS3M, which it turns out is just the overclock KS3L essentially. Um, but one key thing to note here is the fact that these things have been sold out. Right, some of the vendors and distributors they still do have the KS3M. That does seem like the one they're still producing. This guy was in the 20 to 23k from a lot of the stores. Some of the stores still do have it listed, but the KS1 and the KS2 have not came in back in stock for quite a while. Right. Um, the KS0 is currently the only one in stock. That one's down to 449 bucks, right? So pretty interesting. Um, who knows if they're just going to focus on the big boys now or if they're going to actually restock these ever. So these, to me, were kind of the appealing ones, especially like the KS1 and KS2, just because of the price point and the low wattage, right? Because if you think about it, technically, a KS1 is just 10 KS0s, right? So... That would bring you up to, what, 4500 bucks, and there was a discount for buying the unit itself versus the individual units. So potentially could be in, like, the $3,500 range if they were to remanufacture these. Who knows if they will? Time will tell. But that, to me, would be more of an interesting prospect because then at that point, even if the price halves, right, going from 3500 bucks to, like, the $2,000 range, it would suck, but it's not... And all be all, right? If the projections make sense, right? Versus going from these massively overpriced units, going from 40K to 20K, that's a huge drop, right? And especially if Ice River undercuts them, right? So we're all kind of waiting now to see what Ice River does, especially with the KS3M. How low are they going to drop them? Like currently, they're all the way down to, you can see from different distributors, they have them down to like 14,000, 14,200, right? Are they going to drop them to like 12K, 11K? Because at that point, I mean, at $12,000, $11,000, to me, that would still be more appealing than even these $20,000 guys, right? So it's just, you got to factor that in, that even though you're like, yes, it's a huge price drop, oh, let me order, they cut it in half, it's still potential that this thing is going to continue to go down, right? goes down to 17 goes down to 15 but it's just, it depends on the sales, right? So if... I'm sure they did get a nice amount of sales because of this price drop, but then we'll see how Ice River responds, right? If Ice River decides to go lower, then it's going to force Bitmain to go lower, but I don't think they're going to respond like immediately. I think it's going to be one of those things that's just going to space it out, which again, bodes well for any guys who got in early, right? Because it's just extending the huge increase in the hash rate for a longer period of time, giving you more time to make that money, right? So again, those have been the real winners is the... The guys who got in early with Ice River, those have been 100% the better winners. That's definitely been the play, right? You got to be in early. Like, in order to jump in right now, especially with these bigger guys, extreme risk, right? You're facing the potential of it just constantly going down. Like, yes, we all know the yield is going to continue to go down, the emissions reduction, but just the price of the unit itself on top of that, right? So there's a lot of factors kind of going against you. And it's hard because it's all factors that are out of your control. Like, we don't know, we're purely speculating that they'll release that amount, but who knows, maybe they're making 5,000 of these things and they're going to space them out, right? Maybe 2,000 of them drop now and they're leaving the other 3,000 for three months later and they're going to drop them at 5,000 bucks, right? Like, we don't, there's so many factors and variables that are just out of your control, right? So you got to factor in the key thing with this thing that we've learned, though, is getting in early. Right, getting in early with a connection that you know you're gonna be able to get this thing early. Like that has been the number one key, right? So now these are things we gotta consider and we gotta think about because we're gonna see similar situations here in the future, right? We're gonna see this happen with Radiant if it does ever go, when it does go ASIC. Uh, we're gonna see it with like Alephium and any of these other projects who decide to go ASIC, right? These are all things we can learn from. Because, again, it's going to happen again. Like, 
it's just it's it's crazy it's just crazy going from freaking one peta hash 25 xing within the matter of weeks it's just it's been such a insane fascinating thing to watch right um so another bit of news so again we saw the price points for the bitmain ks3s the ks0s are 450 and pretty much the only thing they have in stock are the ks3ms at 142 but again, we'll see if the prices drop on those and we'll see if they restock any of these. That's kind of what has me curious. Are they going to restock the KS1, KS2 ever again? Or is it they just going to stick with the big boys? How many more are they going to produce? Are they starting to go to the next one? We don't know, right? A lot of, a lot of things to think about, a lot of things to factor in. There was news recently of a new Caspa ASIC and the hype went away like that. Like to me, it was just... Red flags all over, not even worth looking into. Didn't make a video on it because of that. So there's the Wind Miner K9. It's supposed to be 11 tera hash, supposed to be the most efficient unit. The drawback was the price point, right? MSRP was at 42, but a lot of the vendors, as we saw, have it at like a 26, 28,000. Still overpriced, horrible timing on them, right? Because again, Bitmain just dropped their thing in half, so I'm sure that they're gonna act accordingly. And again, also keep in mind that if you were somewhat even remotely interested, this thing's not going to ship until freaking November, right? So you're not going to get this thing in hand until Thanksgiving time, which again, a couple of months in Caspa ASIC mining is <laughs> a lot can happen as you guys have seen, right? So not worth it unless they do some extreme price drop, which I'm sure they probably will leading into it, right? Because again, it's going to be a whole different thing. This thing will probably be half of what it's currently trying to sell for right now. Because, again, it's based purely on the profitability, not necessarily the cost of the hardware itself. And that's where the extreme price risk is, right? And that's what you really got to factor in. You got to think about. So now let's talk about overclocking, right? And this is from the Casper Discord. Shout out to T-Swift. So there are a couple of other people doing this, what is eventually going to become like a service of some sort. Go with a trusted source. The thing is, guys, if you're downloading any aftermarket firmware, it needs to be from a reliable, trustable place or person. Right now, the only person I would see that as would be T-Swift and Discord. So if this is something you're interested in, follow in that mining and hardware channel. Stay up to date on it because it sounds like sometime this week, right? So from what we've been seeing and like different things, it looks like the KS0 may be able to go up to 150 giga hash. So that's a 50% increase, which is extremely impressive. It sounds like he may be trying to do like a, like a DeFi kind of model, which would be pretty cool, right? They take out X amount of percentage. And again, for that amount of a freaking overclock, we'll see how high it is. We'll see what it is. I mean, right, we have to see if it's going to be worth it, but most likely it will be. So something to keep note of there. He did also have a note for the KS1, KS2 overclock, so the current KS2 can get up to almost 4 terahash, which is extremely impressive, right? At that point, nearly potentially doubling it, so something pretty cool there. Um, so again, we'll keep up to date with it. Hop in that Discord if you do have a Caspa ASIC, because again, this is going to benefit those who do this kind of thing early, because again, if it's super cheap to do, What's going to happen? Everybody's going to do this thing and it's just going to increase the overall hash rate and everyone's going to be on the same playing field. The key benefit here would be if it's a lot of people aren't aware of it, only certain people do it, therefore your profitability goes up where others doesn't. That's where the, the key win is. It's kind of like in GPU mining when there's like a good find from the dev for the miner where there's like a 20% increase, but then... For that first day, right, the people who are up to date on it, they benefit for that one day. But then as everybody gets wind of it, then everybody's getting that and just levels out, right? So something to think of there. Pretty cool development, though, right? Because, again, there's only a limited amount of units. Something to think about. Um, just keep in mind that if you do overclock, keep in mind those risks. You're going to avoid your warranty. You can possibly cook that thing. <laughs> Especially you guys with KS0s, you're going to have to figure out better ways to cool it. Because, again, if going from a hunt, going up to 50% more, it's going to add a lot more heat. Make sure your power supply is up to date. Keep your, I'm sure people are going to mess with it. They're going to find better ways to cool this thing, right? So just keep up to date on it. Again, Caspa ASIC mining has been super fascinating. Been keeping up to it. Not only because it's fascinating, but also keep in mind, guys, like I mentioned earlier, we're going to see this happen again. 
We're going to see this with Radiant. We're going to see this with Elysium. We're going to see this with Nexa. Maybe not in the short term, but when it does happen, sometime probably within the next six months to a year, if not sooner, we kind of have a blueprint to look at, right? So like what we've learned right now, those guys who freaking degened and went in and got early on Ice River, even if you made it in those first, uh, second, third shipment, guys made amazingly well. A lot of you guys have already ROII'd and are just continuing in profit, right? So it's just... Pretty fascinating to see a lot of takeaways from this, a lot of things to learn, right? Um, so it's just things to factor in, things to think about, especially a lot of new guys. I know a lot of people have been getting into mining that are brand new because of this KS0, right? So just please factor in these things. Please do your research. There are a ton of other videos that go in detail. I know Seb did a very comprehensive one, kind of giving you different ideas, different you know thought points on what the future may hold for it, right? But again, for me... A lot of the gains, if I'm going to be interested in cast basic mining, it's short term. It's get it, get your money, and then get out because, again, the yield and everything is just going to continue to go down over time. Okay, Again, CASPA has that extremely aggressive emission schedule where it's like a yearly halving, right? It goes down 6% every month, but it equates to a halving every 12 months, right? So just factor those things in, consider those things, think about them, see what makes sense to you, right? At the end of the day... It's all up to you. You got to think about it. You got to research it. As we saw, these things are crazy expensive. Do your research. Do your risk versus reward. How much of a degen you want to be. And go from there. Right? All right, guys. Let me know in the comments. How are you guys doing? How many of you guys have KS zeros? I know a lot of you guys do, right? Super tempting with that price. Even at the price point right now, right? Especially if this overclock thing does happen. 450 bucks. A lot of places do have them in stock. Might be something to consider, right? Um, but let me know in the comments. Let me know what you guys are thinking. If you guys have had any issues, it's kind of been a tough one with a new manufacturer. When you have issues, it's hard to get replacements at times, especially for something that's not necessarily available. Things that are out of stock. This is again, these are more things you got to consider if you're getting into this thing. So let me know in the comments, guys. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Thank you for watching, guys, and I am out.